Hello and welcome to this first green team tutorial. Today's quite an exciting day. We're going to take on the challenge of looking how to paint this rather menacing looking axe over here, which is being wielded by this, this creature. And today's job really is to run you guys through the paints and the process of creating a really gnarly, old, battered, rusty and potentially even bloodied axe. So we're going to go over to the wet palette and have a look at the paints that we've got. All from Green Stuff World's main range. Also some of the rust pigment, liquid pigment format. And also coagulated blood. So I'm going to run you through the paints we're going to use. And then we're going to get cracking at creating this rather menacing looking axe. Let's do it. Okay, here we are then. So over on the Green Stuff World small palette, we've got from the metal colour range, we've got anthrax anthrax metal which is our darkest metal we've then got again from the metal color range gunmetal gray which is our mid-tone and then our brightest tone again from the metal color range is quicksilver so that's going to be our main metal recipe then sitting up here from the wash ink range which is one of my personal favorites is ancient sepia that's going to be used to dial down some of the tonality as we layer on the metal and then we've got a liquid pigment which is medium rust from the liquid pigment range and that's going to be used to create weathering towards the end of the process and then over here which is not on the wet palette yet but ready to go is coagulated blood I would advise you probably wait to put this onto your palette until the moment when you're going to use it because it's such a strong paint sometimes it can seep through in reverse through the wet palette paper so I normally wait to the point when I'm going to use it and then we'll load that up and, and get that that effect onto the blade so let's set about creating this blade let's base it mid-tone and then we're going to wash it down and then we're going to create some highlights and some weathering and then we're going to run through the rust process and then finish things off with some blood let's do it okay here we go nice and simple we're going to take our metal color anthrax metal we're going to load up our brush and the first thing we're going to do is just apply a very very nice even coat now because this blade is going to be really old and gnarly the directional application you'll sometimes see me use on more refined blades is not really applicable here because what we're going to try and do is throughout this process we're going to work this paint to create added texture now of course nice smooth brush strokes are perfect when you're trying to create a very even coverage because the Green Stuff World paint covers so well anyway, we can be quite free with this because what we're trying to do is we're trying to inadvertently create added texture as we go through. So let's get this base tone on there. And once we've got our anthrax metal set up, that's our darkest tone which we're going to cover the entire blade with and then we're going to move on to placing the mid-tone. And load up the brush with gunmetal grey. Now, at the start, we discussed some texture. What we're going to do is we're going to use a stippling action, which is keeping the brush relatively perpendicular to the surface. And then we're going to stab away to start to pick out the areas which are going to be in our mid-tone. So we're going right across the top of the, the blade's edge there, round the little leather hanging hole or the drainage hole down the back of the edge of the blade here and we're thinking about the light which is going to be hitting this blade from the top so we're going to build up with these stipple layers to our lightest area at the very top of the blade now we have actually got the lead increase here with the blade sharpened and we're going to pick out down the edge of that with some some stipple and then feather stipple it out pick out the very top edge there and we can see this is quite a subtle transition initially, but this is what we want. We want the metal to start to create gradation. And then as it creates gradation, we'll start to pick out those light spots. See, I'm going down the leading edge there. The leading edge is where this blade would be sharpened across here. Down the back spine. Now, let's not forget as well, light's coming from the top, so it's going to hit the very top also. So we're going to stipple some gun metal into the top edge as well so there we go that's our mid-tone in okay mid-tone gun metal grey dry 
ready to go. You can see we've got a, a very subtle gradation in the blade there. So now we're going to pick up some of the Quicksilver. Time to have some fun. Let's have a look at this. So we're going to start to think about the light again hitting this blade from the top. So it matches how we've got our underpainting, our Zenithal underpainting on, on the miniature itself. Now this is going to be quite a bright application. Beautifully smooth as all green stuff world metallics are. So you can have some fun with this now and start to really watch this blade come alive as we start to, again we're stippling and we're stippling and allowing the brush to stab away at that surface. Just tiniest amount of paint. And we're going to run through the blade and again covering a smaller area, probably about 10-15% of the, the previous layer, which was gunmetal. We're going to take the liberty of picking out this this front edge we are going to weather this as well afterwards so we're not going to see too much of this but we need that tonality there and don't forget we've got our leading edge where the blade's been sharp and we need to catch some light down there because the light would would cast down and just chink that edge very slightly and down the back of the spine as well let's get some highlight down there so we can see our brightest area there we go so we've got three tones in there now we've got the base anthrax the mid-tone gunmetal and Quicksilver picking out the top. And just before we conclude, let's not forget, we've got our brightest right at the top there as well. So Quicksilver right up in the top. Let's get that nice and bright where the light's hitting it. So most of you will have noticed I haven't mentioned any dilution yet as far as the metallics are concerned. And that's because the osmosis with the wet palette, once you've got your metallics on there, a lot of people advise not to use metallics on a wet palette. But the reason I use them on there is because I'm using very small amounts of paint. And ultimately the dilution will come through the osmosis of the wet palette, a very tiny amount of water. So we're moving on to the wash tone now, which is ancient sepia. It's a beautiful washing, so loads of pigment density, but also the consistency of a wash. What we're going to do is we're going to load it up raw from the wet palette, and we're going to very liberally coat the entire blade. So directionally, I'm moving from top to bottom because the wash is, gravity is going to take over and the wash is going to pull lower down. And then what we're going to do is once we've got the wash on there, we're going to pick up some really, really thick blobs of neat wash and we're going to work it into those pitted areas where we've got that weathering. So we want it to pull in those pitted areas because what we're technically doing here is we're accentuating that, that texture in the sculpt. Now I don't mind as I'm stippling it in there, if this is not a traditional method stippling a wash, but you'll see why I do it because I actually want it to flare around that because this wash is actually going to create some of the tonality which will give the illusion of more texture. If you notice as well, I've only given it one quick swipe over the front of the blade there. I'm not going to add too much there. And I'm keeping a lot of my, my concluding swipes at the bottom. So as we go down, we're depositing the thickest amount from the brush at the bottom. So you can see straight away there, we're starting to get a really nice old metal almost rusted look already with that sepia tone okay back to the mid-tone uh beautiful ancient sepia wash is now dried and you can see we've got a really gnarly look already and because we flared out around that that pitting in the sculpt in the blade there we can see already we've started to pick out some some really beautiful patina that's going to be sitting in the blade there so we're going to take our mid-tone which don't forget was gunmetal grey and again, with the stippling action, we're going to go back in and we're going to very, very roughly re-establish that highlight area. But the important thing about this is very lightly stipple this in. What you don't want to do is don't get too close to your sculpt areas that have got that beautiful buildup of wash there. Because that patina is going to sit proud. We want that patina to really be quite prevalent there. And that's what's going to create this antiquitized look. So we're going to stipple this in. But we're going to use that patina as a guide to stay away from those areas. And this is starting to really build up that layered, textured, old, gnarly look. So there we go. Very, very simple. Of course, we're going to get both sides of the blade. I'm only showing you one side, so this is nice and simple for you. Easy. And then, straight away while that's still slightly damp because we want this to homogenize, we're going to pick up the Quicksilver. And as I'm talking now, that's drying very slightly. Pick up the Quicksilver, tiny amount of it. And then we're going to go straight in over the top of it. 
and then catch that very top edge that very brightest edge let's go right up top there and stab away at it we want that to really homogenize and mix so we've done it straight on top of the wet so this is wet on wet almost over creating that texture really really hammering that texture in there brilliant there we go we can see we've got shine up top there the start of all that lovely patina look now, of course what we can do is we can go back in now and re-establish even while that's slightly damp we can go in there and again we're stippling a wash don't forget it's a really unusual process but we want this to look pretty we want this to look gnarly and old we're just picking up big blobs of wash there and jabbing away at it patina is random it's never going to look perfectly uniform you want this to not look uniform it needs to look old and dilapidated and well used right we're going to pick up that medium rust pigment which is a liquid based pigment so this is going to be waiting to dry to get the full effect and we already know we've got a beautiful sculptor we've got all this pitting so let's let's drop some of that into there it can be quite heavy this because you'll find it will as it dries it will it will knock itself back very slightly and not be so prominent so we're going to lay that into those areas and feather it out very slightly as well let's think about where this moisture is going to gather probably around the hilt here where he's holding the handle a little bit of the back of the spine feather that out there you can see i've put them really heavy but you'll be shocked once this dries the beautiful dusty effect that it leaves us we've got some scratches in there which are probably going to pick up some rust we're going to stay away from the front of the blade because it's very unlikely that's going to pick up patina because it's going to be used regularly so it's going to be clean naturally by usage so we've got the rust laid in there let's wait for that to dry and we're going to start to see this pigment develop and we'll get a beautiful dusty rust which is going to homogenize really nice for that sepia wash and we'll start to see this weathering build up okay so here's the inside scoop a couple of secret weapons for you we're going to use to kind of finalize the parts on the blade that are really going to pop for us ember orange we're going to use that to put a very very top highlight in our rust areas and the super secret weapon of the full metal color range from green stuff world is mystic white it says white but it's a super 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 illuminated silver so this is going to work as a very top highlight so first things first pick up a tiny amount tiny tiny amount of your fine detail brush i can't stress how much this is a tiny touch and this is that ember orange and you're going to go into those pitted areas on the sculpt and you're going to place a very very tiny amount in there because this technically is your rust highlight and this will make sure that that fresh patina that's collecting all the time in that pitted area really pops for us tiny tiny amounts in there there you go and you can see straight away that lifts that rust area and we've got some fresh patina which is oxidization of the metal tiny don't be tempted to put too much on here because less is more okay quickly wash the brush now scratch is what we're going to do we're going to pick up some of that mystic white the secret weapon in the metal color range again your fine detail brush tiny amount wicked away so you've got a tiny amount on the brush and then what you're going to do is you're going to hold the brush so you're again perpendicular with the surface and you're going to create little tiny tiny random scratches now make sure these are random because what you don't want to do is start to create any type of pattern because this damage would occur in a random way as he's scything away and chopping away at things and you want this to be very very subtle so you're building up a layer of of added texture which is super super subtle tiny tiny scratches over the entire surface think about the direction think about what he's been hitting if you get some that flare out slightly don't worry because your wash is your best friend you can go back in afterwards and readjust with the wash none of us are perfect right on to the final touches we're going to pick up some of the secret weapon which is mystic white i'll keep calling it that because it's an amazing amazing color which does so much good for these kind of jobs so uh turn your brush sideways once you've got it loaded up and you're just going to very very gently you can be quite free about this because don't forget this is quite a gnarly old edge you're going to go round and you're going to re-establish the very edge with the very brightest color and this is going to bring the form back to the entire structure because you spent so much time weathering this 
that what you don't want to do is lose the form. The only edge I don't tend to put this super sharp highlight on is the bottom edge because we've got so much patina and so much wash that's fallen down here to really cause that darker area to look old and gnarly. So once we've got that on there, we're, we're at the point where the blade itself now is formed and we're going to move on to putting some blood on there and then we're going to have a look at the finished result. Right then, let's do this onto coagulated blood and let's get this final, final effect on there. So we're going to pick up the coagulated blood. We're going to get it blobbed on the brush, but then wick it away a little bit. So we've just got a nice heavy load on there. And then we're going to present it to the side of the blade here. And we're going to try and randomize this as much as possible. And you'll notice with the side of the brush, I also work in a little bit because I'm thinking about how that blood is going to have spattered. And then I'll even turn to a stipple and tiny, tiny amounts which would have sprayed into the face of the blade as he's he's taken a chop at something. Tiny, tiny amounts, not too much with this. And you can then, once you've got those established on there, pick up a real big blob like this and just drop it straight on. Because what will happen is this will dry so it's got a damp look. It's an amazing product. Now I'm leaving the top edge here because I'm presuming that all the spray is going to go that way, but it's not going to hit that top edge. So again, we're keeping the predominance of this effect down low. And there we go. A bit of gore. What would an axe be without some gore? And we've got you. We're done. So very simply, multi-layered, using the wash there to try and give us that, that tonality. And then putting the scratches in there, the weathering with the rust and the high spots. And we've got, I think you'll agree, a really convincing metal, old, decrepit and very well used axe. There we go. Of course, more advanced techniques. If you wanted to carry on with further washes to try and dial back certain areas of the pitting, of course you can. But this is just a very simple approach to give you that first look. So you can go from pristine metal to full patina, all powered by Green Stuff World. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.